Hey, Richard, welcome in. It's time for Million Dollar Domains, starring Million Dollar Domains. <laughs> See how I did that? It's time for Million Dollar Domains, starring Million Dollar Domains. And that's what we talk about here on Million Dollar Domain Names. There are some great ways to make money selling uh, lower price names, buying and selling hand reg names. Domain name investing can be a wonderful way to uh, create value, you know, to go from zero to 2,000 and then take that 2,000 and make it worth 10,000 and then 10,000, 100,000 and, and, and up from there. I think that domain names are a unique and powerful asset unlike anything else. Even though we draw comparisons between domain names and other things, I think domain names are truly unique. And I think that domain names have a functional use in your business. And many people have a domain name, which is both the address of their company as well as part of their marketing strategy. But at Million Dollar Domains, and this is just kind of the introduction as people start joining us here on Clubhouse, we do this talk every week on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. in front of a live Clubhouse audience. I thank everybody in the audience who's been with me most of the past year. Um, come up on stage if you can help comment on some of the things I share. It gives me a short break, allows me to see if I'm going a little bit on tilt, and I can usually learn by some of the questions that, that I get asked. So even though many times I do have a whole show prepared, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to, to, to what's happening now, uh, questions and comments, especially on million dollar domain names that you're thinking of buying or selling or brokering or buying a share of. And if you're listening to the replay, welcome to Million Dollar Domains on Clubhouse, brought to you by Domain Club. Uh, domain Club's the largest domain uh, club on Clubhouse. We serve three markets, anyone who owns a domain name and wants to know more about the responsibilities of owning and the benefits of having uh, one or more domain names. Um, we speak a lot uh, with and amongst domain investors talking about people that either own domains where they're trying to buy and sell them to make a living, or they may be a collector, seeing different trends. And one of the ways you can take advantage of a trend, especially if you're in an industry, a technology industry, is maybe buy a couple domain names that would be kind of staking your claim to some new industries that may form in the future. And then we talk to people in the domain name industry. If you're doing business development for your company in the domain name industry, and you're sitting there every day trying to gin up business, trying to build relationships, you know you may find that it's good to have interaction, uh, to talk to other people in the domain business about your product and also learn about other products and learn about ways that companies can work together. So the last place you can hear Million Dollar Domains is many of you have been listening on our podcast and you can listen to our Million Dollar Domain show without having your Clubhouse app on. So we allow that and we link to that from both Domain Club and Startup Club, which is the largest club on Clubhouse with over 300,000 members. So welcome to Million Dollar domains. Uh, we're going to talk about an incredible use of a half million dollar domain that happened last week that I talked about Monday on Monday domain. But I want to talk about it in terms of million dollar domains. Then I'm going to talk about pricing, pricing of rare and scarce assets. And just doing a little research on the web for some of the things that are involved with pricing rare and scarce and one-of-a-kind assets and supply and demand. And then I thought, and we may have an abbreviated show today if I get called away, I thought I maybe would go through with some of you here live my decision-making process on a name that I mentioned last week that I thought was one of the better domain names. being on 
description. And, and I wanted to maybe uh, have us go through some of the ways I might evaluate uh, this name that's going to be for sale for probably under 100000 and whether I was buying it for myself or if I was securitizing it um, for investors, you know, where I would play a lead role uh, in marketing the name. Um, just, just how you value, you know, a name, a one word domain name that you want to be a million dollar domain name. So that's the, that's the plan for today on million dollar domain names. And what I talked about Monday on Monday domains was an interesting event in the domain space where very rarely, um, but much more increasingly the domain industry, our little niche industry, our little click comes in contact with the rest of the world. And this happened last week, or actually at the end of January, when hypothetically, so said, Elon Musk bought the domain name liar.com and pointed it toward the prime minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. That's what social media is reporting for whatever that's worth. There's no confirmed proof that he bought it. Some people have tied together the fact that a donation was made in the name of Liar.com for $42,069 to the truckers' protest, and that maybe this certain billionaire likes things like 429 and numbers like 69. Um, and, and, you know, that's pretty scant evidence that he was the one that bought it. But it, that's the rumor. So we're going to say that's the rumor. And... Um, Andrew Alleman, who does just an amazing job of reporting the news, picked this up at the end of January and picked up that it was bought off after Nick for a half a million dollars. Um, and if you think about whether we're in a bubble, whether we've reached the highest prices possibly paid for domain names, I don't think we are. If a billionaire can spend a half million dollars, a half million dollars, $500,000, for a use case that is non-commercial, almost a lark, and it's still worth it for, for them. And that what was interesting is this concept that we think everybody in the world knows that you go to Afternick and you buy a domain name. And, and they don't. You know, we know Afternick. We know about listing on Afternick. But, you know, the idea that you want a domain, you want the power of being able to forward this domain and you just buy the name. And once you buy the name, from the moment you buy it and it's delivered, you control where that website traffic goes. And what I thought was interesting about the liar.com purchase was because I think domain names are still special and unique, you get a lot of free publicity when you do something with a rare, scarce, unique one word domain name. Um, you know, it's a story and every story that would come out in this case about someone maybe trying to make a political statement has got to be looked at by companies who are trying to market intentionally their products and services and look at the free publicity that came from this move. And not only that, but inside the free publicity of this domain name is being used to point to something. And that's exactly how I heard about it. I was watching uh, cable news one night, which now that we've cut the cord, I guess cable news is news. You know what I mean? And, and, and the host said, just go check this out. He didn't want to say anything more. But think about the domain name, and we use the word bridge to talk about the QR code that Coinbase had uh, during the Super Bowl. But think about the spoken word when you have a simple, easy to remember word that everyone learned how to spell in the third grade around the world. People that speak English have learned this word and, and know how to spell liar and know what it means. Um, I always think about the Princess Bride when the actress comes out and tells the Billy Crystal character, liar, liar. There's a major movie out there, liar, liar. Um, it's a powerful word, and that makes it an attractive story. And not only does the story say that someone bought Liar and forwarded to this, but implicit in that 
is a poll to go type in liar.com. And again, even though people want to say that Google has usurped type in traffic, that type in traffic is dead, you're still talking about a way where every connected browser and mobile device on the internet can type in four letters, L-I-A-R dot com, and go to where you intend to go to. And whether you are red.com, whether you're eyebrows.com, whether you're 50s.com, whether you're I'm Joe Domains.com, I'm PageHow.com, that's still the essence of what we do with domain names is the entire world right now is using one and only one list of where you take an English or Latin character word and there's some other ways that, that they've, they've made it so you can use other character sets. And you type that into the internet, and it goes to the exact destination that the owner of that domain name wants all that traffic to go to. The exact destination that the owner of that domain name wants all those emails to go to. The exact destination that any resources kept in libraries on that domain name. And in many ways, that's all NFTs are is NFTs are pulling from a resource that's located somewhere on the internet. Um, all that is controlled by the person that owns the domain name. And, and I think it's not only a story that many times can create free publicity in the industry to let you build. So I'm going to segment away now from the way that this person used this domain name to, to make a political statement. I'm saying if I am a company and, and I'm in the mattress business and I buy sleep.com, if I buy sleepwell.com, if I'm in the fashion business and I buy style.com, if I'm in the travel business and I buy vacation.com, if I'm in the cruise business, I buy cruise.com, you've got a chance to redefine everything about that word in terms of how it brings income and more business to your company. Or... As a company, you can take a word like happy or faithful or hoped, H-O-P-E-D. I'll put in a, a, a pitch for one of my names. Um, and you can define and, and affiliate your company with everything that's meant by that word. So I think domain names have incredible power. They're truly unique. And we saw last week how someone that just wants to buy one can click a button, buy it, have it be delivered, and control where the traffic goes. So anyway, I thought that was a pretty that was you know a pretty big event. Um, and on the heels of the Super Bowl advertising, where we had this QR code, which is neat. I think QR codes are great, but they further bring up this idea, especially in the million dollar domain space, that. You can have a QR code and you still need a domain name and the regular internet. So, so much of this stuff gets back to the credibility and the trust and the prestige that you build by having a one word domain name. But then you get this question of what are domains worth? What are million dollar domains worth? And if all you have is the past to look at, then you have this idea that we're going to slowly, you know, move values up as more and more people pay more and more money for different domain names. But as a seller of the domain name, you don't want to sell it for what it was worth in the past. You want to sell it based upon what it could be worth in the future. And what I thought was interesting was I did some just some just searching about supply and demand. Um and I'm just going to get back to some really basic de definitions of supply and demand. And uh, in this article, this is, uh, this is from Econ Library. So just a general um, unbiased article. It says, supply and demand, prices play a central role in the efficiency story. Producers and consumers rely on prices as signals of the cost of making decisions at the margins. So how are prices determined? Because a transaction only happens when a willing buyer and a willing seller agree to have a name, in this case, bought and sold. 
And economic theory says the price of something will tend toward a point where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. It's called the market clearing price, meaning it clears away excess supply and demand. And I don't know if we have a market clearing price in domains because we really don't have an efficient market. The second thing that we can't apply some traditional aspects like market clearing prices, like you'd use to value Apple stock or Amazon stock, is a domain name is a unique asset, whereas a share of Apple stock, lots of people can own it. So every day on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, someone says, I'm willing to sell Apple stock for $385, and everyone buys all the stock that's available at $385, and then it moves to $386. And then when everyone buys all that, it moves to $387. And if there's no one to buy it at $385, and somebody has to sell, then they have to move the price down. But I think when you're selling, you know, unique assets, it's hard to tell because um, each person may have a different use for the property and each person may have a different value. And then someone says you have this historic debate of what makes a quote just price, J-U-S-T. What makes a just price for an asset? A fair price. And I think a lot of people that get involved in domain names, maybe for the only time, because they're buying a name for their business, for their company, for their startup, they want to kind of know what is the just price. And the reason that I don't think we have that in domain names, I don't think we will for quite some time, is because uh, there's a quote from an article, Where Do Prices Come From? It says, prices adjust to equate how much people want to buy with how much they want to sell. And I think this is the most important thing in the price of a domain name. How much does the person who wants to buy it want to buy it? And how much does the seller want to sell it? Every day you see expired domain names sell because there is no seller. The seller in this case is a registrar. Someone paid for a name. They didn't pay the renewal. The registrar wants to get as much cash as they can on that day. They're not considering the long-term value of the name. They, they don't want to have any risk. They don't even want to own the name. So they really want to sell the name. And that makes buyers feel like this is an attractive market to buy in because I don't have a knowledgeable seller establishing what the price is over its potential value the next 10 years. And I think that that makes people think I'm getting an awesome deal. You know, I'm getting someone's throwing this out in the trash and I happen to want it and I waited till they threw it in the trash. If I would have walked into the store and said, hey, I want to buy that, they could have thought, well, we got to charge you a big price for this. But I wait till you throw it away in the trash. And most of us that invest in domain names, we buy these names once they've been thrown in the trash. And, and even though there's a gatekeeper, the registrar, there's no one determining whether the price that that name sold at is fair or not or just. You just compete with other buyers. And I think right now, I think this principle is being turned on its head because I think that you have a seller who doesn't care about the name, but you have a huge number of buyers that are all competing to, to buy the name. And I'm not sure that they know what they're supposed to pay. And I don't know if the cart is pushing the horse or the horse is pushing the cart. And what I mean by that is say a six letter, sorry about that. Say a six letter two word name or a seven letter two word name comes up on GoDaddy auctions and GoDaddy appraisal says it's worth $4,000 and people bid it up to $12,000. I think because no one knows how much the name is worth actually, then no one knows what disc they should pay to get the name. And you don't have a seller 
And the seller's already left and said, hey, I'll take whatever you get. But let's equate this, let's change this to the, the prices we see on million dollar domain names where a buyer dies, buys galaxy.com for a million dollars or buys bird.com for multiple million dollars. Um, here we have a case where somebody wanted to buy the name for that much and the seller was reluctant to sell it until they got that much. And I think we have to take those sales and we have to say that's the market. And what it says to me is that we truly haven't discovered what the true value of domains are because people seem to be willing to pay higher and higher and higher um, analysis. So I went to Investopedia, and this is probably the main sentence I want to share with everyone today. And I'll, and I'll put this on the notes on the recording. This is an article in Investopedia, which is kind of, again, a generic thing, talks about the scarcity principle. And, and I thought this sentence was amazing when it comes to domain names. I'd be interested to see if anyone else has any thoughts on it. Um, they, the article makes this statement. When a product is scarce, consumers are faced with conducting their own cost-benefit analysis. A product in high demand but low supply will likely be expensive. The consumer knows that the product is more likely to be expensive, but at the same time is also aware of the satisfaction or benefit that it offers. So think about your buyer. And one of the reasons that I think many million-dollar domain names are more successfully sold on a, on a make offer basis. But even though I've been successful selling them on a buy it now, so don't get me wrong, I think there's value to both strategies. But the idea is when someone asks the price of a name, the people that pursue make offer strategies, I believe, are trying to start a process to encourage that buyer to explore this concept of their own cost-benefit analysis and what are the satisfaction or benefits that this domain name offers. Because the article concludes, this means a consumer, when we talk about the purchaser of a domain name, whether it be a company or a startup, should only purchase the product if they see a greater benefit from having the product, a greater benefit from having the product than the cost associated with obtaining it. And that's when we get these million dollar transactions and multi million dollar tractions, transactions that are occurring every week. Because real live end user buyers, whether they be companies, startups, divisions of companies, collectors, digital asset owners, when they consummate a transaction and send wires for one to $20 million or more, they have decided you can bet. No one's forcing them to buy it, but they have decided that in doing their own cost benefit analysis, the benefits and the satisfaction of owning the asset, of potentially owning and then buying it and owning it, the satisfaction and the benefits that owning the asset offers are greater than the cost associated with obtaining it. And I think as companies get more and more in the million dollar domain space, on this page, um, sorry, I had a family emergency there, but it was a false alarm. As, as companies get more and more involved in this space, what I think is going to happen is they're going to see other companies who have discovered the benefits and the satisfaction of owning these names. And even though the executives of a company personally may feel that the cost is excessive, if they had to spend their own money, 
if they'll think about it in terms of the benefits a domain name can give to a company and a corporation over the lifetime ownership of that domain name, I think we're going to see more and more transactions because the benefits that a good domain name offers, I believe, this is again for someone who's going to put it to use. I'm not talking about whether a domain name is worth it for someone just to buy and put it on the shelf. Just buy because someone said, hey, you should buy this. Said, okay. I'm talking about putting it to work in the operations of their company. That when they start doing this equation versus whatever else that they spend one to two to three to five to $10 million on, we're going to see more and more transactions. And when you take the fact that there's a fixed number of names available, the reason I started million dollar domain names, the reason I started this podcast, the reason I'm going to publicize this podcast more in the coming months is I believe companies and investors and influencers and, and principals of companies, principals who are owners and understand that what are the benefits to the entire entity of owning a domain name? If the decision makers are managers or divisional heads, they may look at simply the benefits to their division or to their job or to their profit and loss statement. They may not be able to think like a principal who looks at the overall benefits to the corporation or the cause or the nonprofit or the startup or the endeavor of owning this domain name for years to come. And when you take a million dollar domain name and you divide its benefits, even though you can amortize it over 30 years, just say you divided the benefits over 10 years. That's 100,000 a year. That's $8,000 a month. And if companies would look at what they spend $8,000 a month on, it's usually some type of service, some type of consulting, some type of component of their entire business. And here you have the ability to buy an asset that can be the driver of the top line, can be a driver of the company's valuation. That's why I started Million Dollar Domain Names, is I firmly believe that Million Dollar Domain Names have these attributes, and companies need to think about them in general before they're presented with the perfect domain name for their industry or product. If they're prepped in a way that they've already talked about these ideas, they're going to be ready to make the quick decision that may be needed if a name comes up for auction. Or if a broker who's offering the opportunity to multiple people, all who I believe, I believe each broker who's selling a domain name usually has at least 10 to 20 people for a million dollar domain name that would be able to go through this equation and say that the satisfaction and the benefit of owning the domain name is greater than the cost of acquiring it. And the job of a good broker is to, even if he has people or she, if, if, if she has people that understand that, how do you bring about a transaction? You know what I mean? Everybody could nod their head, but I think a good broker will be able to then bring it toward a conclusion of that transaction. But I think in many cases, finding people who might see the benefits, you know, there's gonna, and, and you may have to act quickly if you're being offered a name that's the ultimate name for you because of your brand or your space. So I really think that we can learn from scarcity principles um, and things like that. Now, I'll talk about on Monday some of the ways that the scarcity principle is misused in domain names, mostly when it comes to lower price domain names. And the reason I think we need to separate the two is because there's 150 million .com domain names registered. And the same things that are used to sell names that were just purchased for $9 can hurt the perception of million dollar domain names. But anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, and I don't know if that's brought about any thoughts or anyone wants to share. Um, I just think that we've got to 
potentially increase the education we provide. And this is what I'm trying to do with million dollar domains. Because right now, most of the time, the education that a buyer is given about a domain name comes from the seller or the broker who's selling the name. And I think that even a true statement could be looked on skeptically. If I said to somebody that of the top 10,000 words, um, 3,500 are being used by companies, 2,500 are for sale, and about 200 a year are being taken off the market. If I was a broker or the seller of a name, someone may not look at whether that statement's true or not. They're just going to say, oh, you're trying to spin it to sell the name. But I think there are things about million-dollar domain names that are true that if people kind of understand them in an environment where they're not being presented with a name, I think they can be comfortable then when they have a chance to own what could be one of five or six names that give their business the power at once. Most of the time, people in mainstream industries only find out that names were even available for sale once they're sold. And because domain names are one-of-a-kind assets, when a name like bird.com sells, it does generate a lot of publicity because it's sold. That's a transaction. That's a newsworthy event. A lot of distribution outlets and media outlets and news sources and blogs are less likely to say that a name is coming available for sale because it looks like they're helping the person sell it, they're helping the person promote it. So you have a situation where potentially one-of-a-kind domain names are reaching their highest and best visibility in the current advertising market, in the current public relations market, at a time when multiple buyers cannot buy the name anymore. And they're going to have to go for a substitute. And I think that's going to cloud the whole process. So as we go on in 2022, you can tell I'm a homer for million-dollar domain names. I've sold two domain names in my life for over a million dollars, and I'm looking to do it again. Um, I've been able to ramp up to a point where I think I'll, I'll buy either by myself or on behalf of investors names in the, in the 30 to $200,000 range and look to position and stage those names to sell for over a million dollars. And I think for a name to sell for a million dollars, it's probably got to have benefits of over a million dollars. And I think that, this is going to be a strong part of the market um, that, that will be affected by world events and cryptocurrency and everything. But there's a lot of businesses out there. There's a lot of money out there. And there's very few words in .com. And, and I think what we've seen is .io, uh, you know, the country code TLDs are coming on strong with more and more sales. And I think in many cases, that's just going to provide more people that eventually are going to want to upgrade to the .com. If there was one part, I'll finish my first section with this, and then I'll see if we have any questions. If there's one part of the market that, in my opinion, was the strongest in 2021, it was companies having funding rounds and using that as an opportunity to move from a two-word name or with a you that was good to be a startup, but now they want to they want that stamp of approval. They want that ability to move across different industries. They want to extend their brand. And I think that when multiple companies start doing that, I think the companies with the vision to look ahead and look around and see other competitors that may be doing that with their ultimate word, truly. truly this may be the, and if you're out there listening to Million Dollar Domains, you want some help understanding that, contact me. I do do consulting for companies to try to help them determine what their ultimate name is, what their perfect name is. And because I don't represent any names right now, I don't own any names right now, my purpose in doing that consulting is to benefit the buyer. And if you're a seller 
who has million dollar domain names. I do consulting there too, where I may not be able to promise to bring you a buyer, but I may be able to help you stage and shape your name to be more than just name and price, but to really be able to communicate to your buyers some critical elements of your name that they can use to make this calculation. Remember, the buyer is trying to decide, do the satisfaction, when I mean satisfaction, what I mean by that is some people might say, uh, you know, everything's based upon fear and greed. Well, the absence of fear would be satisfaction. So satisfaction benefits are we own our one word brand dot com and no one else does. We own the generic name for our industry and no one else does. We own a brand uh, where there's some confusion out there in the public and we have the one word dot com. So those are some of the benefits people get by owning a domain name satisfaction. And then benefits are we have the ability to grow our company. We have the ability to grow a new division of our company. We have the ability to go global because we've been regional up till now. And so think about it that your buyer, you have to help them, I think, determine whether the satisfaction and the benefits that they're going to receive for your domain name are greater than the cost. And to do that, I said I was going to leave you with one more sentence. That was the last sentence I was going to leave you with, but I got one more. Let's see. Uh, let me go here. I read a Deloitte consulting. I don't even know if they're around anymore. This is from five years ago. And it talked about pricing. It talked about pricing. How do successful companies, are they? how are they able to price their assets to make the most profit? And even though this was being applied to a commercial company, I really want you to hear this if you can. And thanks, everybody, for staying with me for this long diatribe today. And I do, hopefully, if you're appreciative of it, I, I would love to hear some comments. And I, we can try to, as a group, pursue a better understanding of this concept than even I might bring myself. You know what I mean? And I think that's where I'm going to take Million Dollar Domains is in a collaborative way that multiple think people besides myself thinking of these same things, we can maybe slowly do a better job of commuting to the outside world. But when it comes to pricing and companies that are the most successful and having pricing lead their profit strategy, that's what we want, right? Um, you can't do anything about the cost of your domain name. You already bought it. So the only way to make more profit on your domain name, this sounds simple, but just think about it. The only way to make more profit on a name you already own is to sell it for more money. Um, yes, there's income ways to do it, and, and I hope we do all those, but really. So here's what this, this Deloitte study said. It says, companies that are the pricing leaders, um, and in this case, they did a 26% 20 20 better job at true profitability. Listen to this statement. They had an advanced understanding of customer and product portfolios and their customers' efforts toward growing profitable products and customer combinations. So that's like a management consulting sentence, but let's, let's, let's break it down. Do we, when we're selling million-dollar domain names or we're brokering million-dollar domain names, do you have an advanced understanding of your customer's position? and their product portfolios, and what they own and how they feel about what they own. And you have to understand how the company's existing efforts are being directed toward growing profits. You need to help put your product, the million dollar domain name you're selling, into some of the equations that they've already agreed on that make more profit for their company. And if you don't have to do this. You can just say, hey, it's my name. It's $2 million. If you want it, give me a call. If not, no problem. And that's a very effective strategy. You'll find out who wants to pay $2 million for the name when they offer you and they say, please, please, please contact us. We've put $2 million in escrow waiting for you to accept. 
will you please contact us? And then you're like, oh, okay, now I know I got a buyer. And then you ask for three. Um, but I think many cases you may have interested buyers and you have to try to do a better job of selling or marketing or staging or positioning that name. And I think a lot of it comes from this, do you truly understand the person on the other end? And I think any efforts you do as a broker, as a domain owner, to get out there in the real world and really understand how companies perceive profitability and gross margin and what they spend their money on, I think you'll have a better chance of getting to this magic equation that a buyer who consummates a transaction has determined that the satisfaction and benefits of owning this asset, in this case, a domain name, are greater than the cost of acquiring it. And especially at a time when money is very plentiful, at least up until this year, was very cheap to borrow, um, you know, that's where we are in million-dollar domain names. And people look backwards when it comes to value to try to make themselves feel good and what we have to do is we have to give them off that methodology and say, listen, I don't have to sell this name as a seller. It only costs me $9.07 a year to keep this name, to wait for my ultimate best user. But if I can help you understand at this time that the benefits of owning this name are greater than the cost I've placed on it, and the cost to you that I've placed on it is in many times arbitrary. I've simply owned this name for a certain amount of time for a certain reason to achieve a certain amount of lifestyle goal or profitability goal or goal for my investors. And I've just picked a number. I'll sell this name for 800,000. I'll sell this name for a million four. Sell this name for 200,000. Almost up until the point a seller or a broker puts the name in a text or puts the number in a text or puts the, the, the number in an email or, or says the number on a phone call, it could change by 20 or 30 or 40 or 50%. I could be selling a name like I have a name, 50s.com. And if I was talking to Procter & Gamble and they want to talk about the health and wellness for people in their 50s, and I was about to quote them a price and say I went into the call thinking 125000 just in the time it took me to say 125,000, I could change my mind and say 250. Because the sellers were just imagining our prices. But the buyer, if the buyer knows what the benefits and the satisfaction is of owning the name, in many cases, they'll say, fine, sold. And the seller, will be, oh my gosh, that price is too low. But that's where you get a transaction. Anyway, that's million-dollar domain names for today. Um, let's see if anyone will share a comment. They're probably giving you too much to think about. Um, please follow me on Domain Club. Uh, sign up for our newsletter at domain.club. You'll be able to keep up on everything we do in million-dollar domains this year. If you hear any of the enthusiasm in my voice about what million dollar domain names can be. Uh, you can see kind of the sum total of things I've been thinking about for 15 years. Um, and I'm confident enough about the benefits of these things we call domain names to, to go public, uh, to not say if you contact me in a very controlled manner, I'll be able to exchange under confidentiality agreements the price that we'd like for this domain name, even though that could be a great sales strategy. I'm not sure we have anybody because again, the .com registry doesn't make any more money. I don't make any more money if I sell 50s.com for $500,000. They still make $9 a year. I'm sorry, they make $8.20 or whatever a year, but they make that 150 million names. So they're not going to go out there and promote you know, if, you're, if we're waiting for VeriSign to promote premium domain names, they're not going to do it. The marketplaces aren't really going to do it. They've got overhead to pay. They've got earnings to meet. 
They need to do sales at the margin. They Like what I talked about earlier, they need to do sales where the existing buyers and the existing sellers have determined prices to be, and they want to do as much volume as they can at that level. Hopefully, in this case, buyers are happy, sellers are happy. It doesn't matter to them. They're just going to take the market to wherever there's the most amount of volume. They're not going to look at the needs of a seller who has a certain price in mind for their name. I think companies like Dan have split the difference because what they've said is, you market your name, you do the best you can, and we'll help you efficiently process the sale of that name for less than maybe you're paying in other places. Brokers do a great job of marketing domain names, and over time, they build up an extensive list of relationships at companies that they can call upon to market a domain name. But in many cases, they also benefit from doing names at this equilibrium price. I think some of the strongest people that I've always tried to interview on the domain show, the reason you'll hear me interview Larry Fisher and Ari Goldberger, and the Costello brothers, and Monty Khan, and Mike Mann. You'll hear me talk to people who are acting as principal for their own names. They, and, and Rick Schwartz, they know what they eventually think they can be worth. And they're ready to represent that that's a number possibly higher than most people think. And they're ready to engage there. And I think that's a very important part of our business and, and one that I was exposed to going to the traffic conferences. Um, so anyway, that's, that's all I have for you for Million Dollar Domains. Let's see, if you got anything beneficial out of today's talk, let me know. We'll be back next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for Million Dollar Domain Names. If you're listening to this podcast during the week, if you're a seller or an owner or a broker of a million dollar domain name, I'd like to get your perspective on some of the things I'm sharing about price and market. In exchange, I'll share with you some of the work I'm doing on quantifying just what makes a million dollar domain name worth a million dollars. How many are there? What's the size of the market? And when we expand the market for investors in million dollar domain names to people who can buy slices or shares or a partialized ownership of million dollar domain names, I think we'll be having this discussion with more and more people than just the single company owners who can own the name themselves. So that is the show today for million dollar domains. Let's see. I know there's a lot of great shows today. I'll probably be on sometime Thursday or Friday with another social talk. I'll check in with Jeff's room tomorrow and see if I can be a resource for anybody. And I uh, wish you all a great week. So happy domaining out there. And I'll end the room in five, four, three, two, and one.